let's so, move through. Yeah. Going back to the application, so we moved our way all the way from the outside in. So we talked about building entry point where you want to have your license plate recognition. We talked about the parking lot where you can have a detection, how many parking spaces are occupied. We talked about um, yeah, also audio analytics technology and also the perimeter where you want to detect uh, people and don't want to alert on bushes that are moving in the wind. And now we're talking about the building entry point. And I think that we have currently, right today, we're basically uh, also showing this here, um, a very exciting uh, new technology that we bring. But let me first talk also about the other things that you probably want at the building entry point. So one thing you definitely need is a uh, picture of who's coming in or a video footage of who's coming in even in challenging lighting conditions. And specifically at the building entrance, it might be that you have some backlighting from behind the door, so it might be much brighter outside than inside. And that's specifically where our cameras do a great job with the HDRX technology that's included in all of those, also specifically in our 8000 Flexi Dome, which has the best in class imaging capabilities. So you can always rely on getting the best shot out of that camera for the person that's coming in, even with the backlighting. So, and then there might be some ap applications around it. So you can layer analytics on that. You might want, want to prevent somebody loitering in front of the door and getting in as soon as somebody leaves the building or something. Uh, so you can set up specific alerts with our IBA Pro. And this comes with those cameras. It's our latest, greatest analytics package. So with IBA Pro buildings, right out of the box, you can reliably detect uh, people and vehicle with those cameras. So you can set up an alert if there's somebody loitering in front of that door and shoot it right to your, to your uh, SOC. Now, what is new and what most of you probably have already seen, we are now also bringing the capability with our GAN detection system, uh, to, uh, which is designed to detect uh, also if there is a person uh, carrying a firearm, basically brandishing it. Um, you might have already seen it. We demonstrate it again in just a few seconds. Um, and what I also want to add to that, like that is basically the real-time capability. So you want to record, but you also want to detect incidents in real time. But what you also can do by leveraging your video management system, since all that footage is analyzed in real time and annotated, that's basically the script that Matt was talking about. So our camera is analyzing, oh, there is a person, there is a vehicle. It also tells you information about the color. You can go back later to that same footage and search through it. So you can basically say afterwards with the forensic search, I want to find all time slots where somebody entered, entered the building. So if you need to investigate an incident, you can make use of those analytics again. And this is supported by our cameras. As I said before, the FlexiDome Panoramic 5100i also gives you this intelligent audio analytics with basically the three um, MEM sensors which are in the camera. And for example, also with our FlexiDome 8000i, so camera and analytics go hand in hand. You, for example, also get the PTRC um, option, uh, which is pretty unique. So this you only get on our highest tier camera. This also allows you for this uh, remote configuration. So you can really uh, move the, the field of view remotely. So once you install it, you don't have to climb up the ladder again if you want to kind of move the field of view. And we have a lot of customers uh, who uh, basically love that functionality uh, because you don't have to, if you see, get back on your computer and see you wrongly configured it, you can just move the field of view um, with that remote configuration option, um, which is very powerful. So, and with that, um, we have one video for our gun detection capabilities, which we also show outside. And as I mentioned before, so we already previously had that gun shot detection functionality which is based on our Bosch patented Sound C technology. And we're now adding uh, the visual gun detection capability. And we are basically in that kit, which we are forming with the two visual gun detection cameras and the one uh, gun shot detection camera. We are the world's first to combine those technologies and providing it. And we also made a video about that, uh, which I'm going to show right now.
what you get is a gunshot detection capability from our Flexidome Panoramic 5100i, as well as the visual gun detection capability on our dome camera. And as a world's first, we are combining both of those technologies, um, which allows you to, what Matt already talks about, get this power to predict, to even react to such an incident before the first gunshot goes off. And also for the gunshot detection, we also have this directional estimate. So with that, you can also be ensured that you know where it came from, the gunshot. And we specifically designed that for learning environments, but we also, we also know it's kind of uh, interesting everywhere, so also for government buildings and so on. And if you're wondering now, why do we need to combine both technologies, I can give you, walk you quickly through um, both of those, uh, or the whole application flow. So we have this layered approach with the visual gun detection as well as the gunshot detection. So the visual gun detection, this allows you to detect, like a person or a vehicle, also a gun or a firearm, might be also a rifle, that is carried in the hand of a person, even before the first shot goes off. Certainly, this person needs to walk through the field of view. And if such a, an incident is detected, you can automatically trigger an alert which goes to your security operations center, and they can verify it. However, there might be situations uh, where the first shot goes off even outside the field of view. In these situations, the second layer comes into play, which is the audio-based gunshot detection. 75 feet radius, 150 feet diameter, so you can be, so to say, also rely on if you don't see the weapon but there is a shot, you also get informed. And with the directional estimate, you also know where it comes from. And both of those technologies layered on each other allow you to early detect this. And here's the best part, since it's all integrated into your cam cameras, it's basically integrated into your existing security infrastructure. So it's not another silo of system where somebody comes to you and tells you, oh, well, well, we have this great new system, uh, but it doesn't play together with all the systems you have. No, it's a camera, it provides you with video footage, and it talks to all the security systems you already have. So it can speak with your access control system, it can speak with your video management system, it can speak with all of that. It just integrates in what you have. And um, here's also a little picture of that. So that's also what you can see outside. So we have the two dome cameras. Many of you already played around with that. Uh, we say that this is both for one approach path and this approach path should be around or should have a maximum width of 30 feet. And we detect if there is somebody holding a gun in his hand. And at the same time, we have one camera giving you that uh, situational awareness with that surround shot so you have no blind spots in that area and at the same time you also get the gunshot detection with the three uh, sensors and as I already pointed out uh, we have a 75 feet detection radius for that gunshot detection technology and that's so to say what we bring uh, we even make it easy for our distributors to order that system since we put that all into one order number. So it's, it's, it's one solution because you need those two cameras. We will also see that in, at the, in the demo in the two seconds. It's really a well-designed system um, to ensure with the two cameras, two cameras more than one, and um, to ensure that uh, we have the best uh, detection accuracy. And from a technology standpoint, just to also point that out, we have the latest neural networks, neural network technology integrated into that camera. And as Florian also pointed out earlier, it's not that easy to get that all that big network down to the camera. And um, as I said before, we specifically designed that for also for schools and as you may know, in a school, you typically have a school resource officer, which is basically a police guy, and uh, he has a weapon in a holster. And if you also pick up the guns which are in a holster, um, you will get false alarms all day long. This is why our detector distinguishes 
Um, this is what you can see here on the right hand side. These are actual uh, detections from our detector, um, which we just visualized here. So the green box, this is a weapon that has been detected um, as a, a gun in hand or a weapon in hand. And the yellow box, this is basically detected as a weapon not in hand. So you can distinguish if basically what, what we give you is just the detections of those green box, we suppress those yellow boxes to ensure that we do not trigger if there is just a school resource officer or just a police guy walking around. As a matter of fact, we were also talking to a large retailer and they were the first thing they told us was, well, if we deploy that in Texas, uh, like we will get false alarms all day long because everybody is, is walking with a, with a gun. So um, that was basically the user research part of it. Um, and also for us as a European company, it's sometimes we wonder, but there are a lot of people walking around with guns. So, um, and we, we don't want to alert on those, right? So, um, that's a bit about the technology. So we make this distinction and we also give you still the person detection in that mode. This means uh, you can still do people counting, you can still get loitering alarms with that mode. Um, it's all still working at the same time. Can I, can, I, can I clarify that? So am I understanding you to say you have pose detection, meaning the gun is picked up and it's pointed as posing with, at someone versus just in the hand, down by your side. So what we are doing is we are actually training the network such that it can distinguish between a gun in hand and a gun in holster. It's actually um, part of the, like the network design that we can design. It's not explicitly working with the pose. We okay. have some neural network design specifically done for that, uh, but it's not working with the pose. Oh, like the magic to it, right? Um, you can ask Florian right. after, after the, the show, right? Functionally, the way you described it is uh, how, how it works, though, that, that when the gun is raised, it then becomes detected. That's you know, the just, net result. Just a quick question, because you're, you're using the word weapon and gun interchangeably. Correct. It's not weapon Correct. detection. There, I want to be very clear. Yeah, if, if we're going down that avenue, it's, it's a firearm detection. Okay, so so that's we are not detecting any knives. So in, 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 in that context, Correct. have you guys explored the path of unconventional firearms, firearms that are home brews, firearms that don't look like guns? Yep. So, right, so that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's yeah. a, it's a big challenge in what government is? facilities to yeah. where we're letting people in the building authorized with malicious intent. And their right. malicious intent is, is the, 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 the crux of their malicious intent is that they're intelligent and they know what's going on from a security standpoint in the building, so they're gonna find a way around. Like, like our red teams inevitably do in the government all the time. The red teams find the vulnerability, I guarantee you they will. No, you have to be clear. It's like with the pickup truck, so to say, which are the yeah. example I brought prior to it. So what is a weapon and what not? And in the first, um, in the first way, we decided all these toy weapons, homemade weapons, we have some examples there where we say we take them into the training set, right? Where we say this is definitely a weapon. However, the caveat is you have to be cautious that you will not, I don't know, any screwdriver is then a weapon, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's from semantically speaking, if you're not, so it's not clear where this decision boundary between those weapons is. And um, right now for the launch, that Neil says we are pretty clear. These are really rifles, professional rifles. These are not homebrew made guns. On the long run, this might be a different issue, like you just said. When we identify this, then we have to separately treat this. However, we're aware of this problem, but we haven't solved it, so to say, yet. Well, and, and along those lines, I'll give you a tidbit, right? My peer mentioned pose detection. To discharge a firearm in, a, in an unconventional manner still requires some difference in a human being's body language, right? So there's going to be, there, there, there may be some premise there to use pose detection and not just the motion of the arms carrying over, but some unconventional motion in the human being biologically that indicates that there is a behavior that's not somebody picking up a nap into their nose, sneezing, hmm. um, or you know, pulling their phone out of their pocket and holding it at hip height. You know, because we've we've discovered guns and firearms in suitcases and people carrying them inside of pillows because they're working overnight on a military base and then they come in and discharge their firearm and kill a bunch of our American soldiers and, and, and we're caught in the middle. 
Yeah. Right, trying to discover these things. So there, there, there could be an opportunity to start creating that layering approach that Bosch is very good at doing and saying, you know, teaching the neural network that there's there's biological signatures or identifiers that could note yeah. uh, the existence of a firearm. One one thing that I will say, if I can if I can just back out and be a little bit more abstract for a second, the next yeah. five or ten years, one of the things that neural networks are awesome and, and Florian's team trains common objects all the time. There's, you're always going to be able to find an exception. And this isn't just in security. We get a lot of requests for, can you detect such and such in my manufacturing process that only exists in that factory? Understood. So long term, the, uh, the goal would be to create a sandbox that would allow people, guess who has the most footage of that process is the factory itself. So if we can create an environment in which people, they can dictate what's important and we give them access to our development tools to some extent so that they can build a detector that can then be embedded in a Bosch camera. We don't have to solve every problem for every person. We can, so I think long term, you start to find the commonalities between the thing that you're detecting, your poses might be different than his poses, but as long as I give you a place that you can put it together and then give it back to me for a camera, then I, we would like to push that off on you longer term because no matter how many problems we solve, we're always gonna be able to find I one more. I have a laboratory just for that reason. <laughs> it, it, like it, it's, it's, it's MCD, like I work for MCD and it is our position that our partnerships with our vendors aren't just one way. It's not the vendors right. producing technologies and innovations that we could use. It's how can we help our vendors improve their accuracy and their, their, their abilities and capabilities in our circumstances, because a lot of my circumstances are going to be individuals that are highly trained in, in fire in, in defending themselves with weaponry, whether it be a firearm, sharp objects, so on, in an unconventional way, uh, you know, in a very, very uh, underhanded way, if you will. Okay, we'll cool. call you. So, I will. Oh, please, I'm, 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 I'm going to be first in line. So like the gun shot I already mentioned, this is so to say layered on it with the sound detection. First detect, okay, there is some loud noise, then you want to classify it. Uh, the difficult part here is not to detect the gunshot because as you can imagine, you could just say, I will alert on every loud noise. By that nature, you will get every gunshot because every gunshot is a loud noise. But you will also alert on fireworks, the backfiring of a car, or any other loud noise. So the challenge here really is to have some good technology, which we have, to <laughs> classify this gunshot correctly. And then you also want to estimate, estimate the direction of the gunshot, and that's what we're doing with our three sensors, because you can then triangulate from which direction this gunshot came. Now, overall, what we want to deliver, or what we deliver with that um, whole solution with the three cameras, is this early and fast detection and notification capability. Because you have the layers, you don't have to wait for the first gunshot to go off. You can already be alerted um, before the first shot goes off. The cool thing is, compared to a metal detection system, where really people have to stop, um, this is frictionless. So you can mount the cameras and people can just walk through. This was actually, when, before we developed that solution, we talked to a lot of schools. And there was, I remember it, there was one principal, he said, one problem we have with our metal detectors is that every morning at 7 a.m., students try to get in, we have a long queue. That queue itself is a security risk to them because if there would be a shooter coming at 7 in the morning, that's a problem. On the other hand, he wants the students to get into the classroom and he doesn't want them to be in the queue. And this basically disrupts his schedule. So um, with that kind of camera system, you don't have people queuing up, everybody goes through, everybody goes to class, nobody has to stand in the queue. At the same time, you don't want to move all that footage somewhere. So since it's in the camera, all the data collection and processing, it's in the camera, it stays in the camera, it's privacy protected. And compared to lots of systems which are out there, specifically if you compare it with others, it's the most cost-effective solution. And we also allow pretty flexible uh, payment options. So we know for education and also for government purposes, um, it's probably be a, a perpetual license as you don't want to have um, use your funding and don't 
uses as a subscription. We have other customers like corporates, which are more relying on subscriptions here. And then, I already mentioned this, since it's a camera-based system, it's already integrated with all your other systems. So it can speak with your VMS, it can speak with your access control system, and you don't have to change anything, you can just add it on to what you have, and it will work in conjunction with that. And this now brings us to the demonstration, and which we certainly will do live. So there we go. You can see the gun detection in both cameras up here. Um, a lot of people have asked just in this week, why are we using two cameras? Uh, this is an important detection. We want to get it right. So you'll notice if I point this gun at this camera, its profile is very small, head on. But the other camera has it. Whereas if I flip, uh, this gives us to make sure that we have a broadside view of that gun, regardless of how it's, how it's presented to the camera. Uh, we also have some certain pixel density requirements and such, but it does allow us uh, to do handguns as well, um, which is a small object. So we still have pixel math uh, behind all this to, to make it work. It's a very robust detector. Um, so here, maybe we'll trick it a little bit. Uh, you can trick it. Uh, it's hard sometimes, but I can probably get this to go off on a drill. Now, Frankly, if somebody were pointing a drill at people in my facility, I'd probably want to know about it anyway. Um, uh, that's not great, uh, but the point is, uh, it's not absolutely perfect, and we, we, we've got an app for that. Yeah. So, Nia, do you want to say some few words, or should I just turn it on? Yeah, so maybe, maybe we say something to it. So, as you know, in the end, it's just a neural network looking at the object shape. So, what you just saw with the drill, it has the same shape as a weapon. And there might be situations where the object that is carried by a person looks the same as an actual gun. So we somehow got inspired by what everybody of you probably sees on weekends, um, which is in the NFL, technology instant replay. I'm not a US guy, but you all should know it. So what they do is if there is, so to say, something to be reviewed, they have that instant replay functionality, and you have to imagine, if you have the camera, this camera makes that decision in real time, like a referee in an NFL game. They don't have a replay to make that decision at the moment. Now, what you could do, and that's what we do, we have a second neural network which gets the whole replay, just like the referees again then for the replay video, and as soon as we trigger an alarm, we have a system that then gets the replay. So it has more, the whole video sequence to decide, not just a single image, and it can replay it multiple times, take a look at it, play it over and over again, and decide on that. What we find is that's much more accurate, and sometimes in, in real time it might be difficult, right? Somebody's pulling something out, you see it for one second, in real time it might look like, okay, that's a gun. If you look at the replay played over and over again, like in football, you say, oh no, actually there was some rule violation, we should call that back. And that, that's what you see right here. This window basically is your NFL instant replay. So now Matt is triggering here an alert. Now we say call on the field, gun, under review. So let's see what now the ultimate decision will be. So this is now replayed. And what you see is the call is confirmed, it's a gun, and we automatically integrate this. This is now the power of what I said earlier. So this is talking to all your existing security infrastructure. We have now the ability to integrate this with a two-way radio. This confirmed detection now automatically trigger the two-way radio, and potentially one application for that could be that it automatically alerts the security staff with a code word. Why do you want to use a code word? Potentially, you don't want to get everybody in the building panicking. If you say there is a gun somewhere in the building, like people would run around, go crazy. If you say, I don't know, code red, code silver, whatsoever. Um, just the security staff knows it. They are informed. And this could be automatically triggered after such a detection. Now, I would suppose let's, let's do the trill again, right? 
Oh no, it did not trigger yet. There we go. Now it's so triggered. Call on the field is that this is a gun. Correct. Call on the field is gun. It's under review. It says call overturned, no gun. So after watching the replay, looking at the situation again, we're saying it's not a gun. Still automatically no human in the loop. It's just a more powerful model of the camera that not just has the single image, but also has the whole video sequence. Since we are resource constrained here, have to do it in real time, might be a bit challenging to do that decision in real time. We can also verify that decisions with the second model. Yeah, so I, I wanna be clear, you don't have to have this second layer, but the point is with virtually any alarm that comes into your system, whether it comes from a camera or some other device, you're going to have to verify and respond to that alarm. What we're doing here is offering a tool to automate that verification. How many of you guys think if you had seen a still image of me pointing the drill, uh, you know, particularly on, a, on a, uh, a sock monitor, could you tell at a glance whether or not that was a real gun? Like you would probably digitally zoom and, and do some research. So we're seeing performance out of this larger cloud model that's very similar to what a person can do. And so it's just another avenue uh, of using AI to do that second step. First is detect. That's all going to happen at the edge. It has to happen at the edge because it has to happen quickly. Uh, but then we have to verify and respond. We can certainly send it to you or to your employees or your facility and you can verify and respond the way you would with any other. Uh, but we also have this cool option of the essential replay uh, where it's going to verify and respond for us um, all hours of the day never takes a day off, never falls asleep, never calls its girlfriend. Uh, it's always ready to go. Great, any questions? We talked about integration in the radio. That also integrates in the IP speaker and the intrusion panel. So it all can interact with each other. Say you don't have the ability to verify it, you can also take it into the intrusion panel and automatically simulate, or not simulate, it's on the mind. But you can automatically lock down your doors in the facility. If it comes back, the, the review says it is done. Uh, with everything integration and they working together, it makes it a, a very simplistic process. Correct. Question in the back. Um, going back a little earlier, one question I did have, is there a way to train it to for the holstered weapon, let's say it's in a school and there's a resource officer, maybe to look at the person as well to say, okay, they're wearing a specific color uniform or something like that, but if something, somebody that's not a resource officer has a holstered weapon in the school, it'll still go off. Correct, so excellent point. We are currently, like, certainly for the first release which we have, we look into enabling that functionality to detect that there's somebody holding a gun. Now. We will certainly extend that functionality. Since it's software, we will build on that. We, are, we have now different avenues which we can take. This is the first product without that capability to look at that person, but um, we are also looking to that. Like one avenue which we have is certainly increasing, increasing the detection ac accuracy also against other adversarial objects. Second lever we have, we could increase the detection distance to also see somebody in the back with a gun. We could also um, take more analytics into account, and we will get to that in a minute, about the appearance of a person, as you said, with the uniform and so on. And another thing which we could do, we could even make more integrations. Maybe you also want to trigger a mass alert system and so on. So these are all paths we are currently looking in and actively working on. Um, for the time being, we don't have it. Um, but we will come to it just in a minute on the capabilities to also detect things like a uniform and so on. Um, and we are looking also into combining those capabilities with the gun detection. So exactly. Correct. Like a police officer or, you know, maybe a member of the military or someone that can have that gun is going to have it in there. Correct. So I want to be clear in the initial release, we are not focused on holstered weapons. This is, these are weapons that are of uh, imminent threat. They're, they're up They're in, uh, it's not, as, as Niels pointed out, explicitly posed detection, but we are expecting it to see, expecting to see it brandished. Uh, as Niels also mentioned, we, we may go to holstered weapons, but kind of a poor man's solution to that 
Uh, let's say we go to another iteration that has holstered weapons as one of the detectors. Um, one of the other things that I've talked to a number of customers about is typically this is an access control system. We know who the school resource officer is by his badge. We can just shunt the alarm for 10 seconds after he or she badges in uh, and say, don't detect. So now we know who it is, but if somebody goes through that doesn't have that badge and has a holstered weapon, then maybe that's a problem. So there's a couple of ways to slice that up. Correct. Thank you. Good. This now brings us to the last application.